Hi, my name is Tony White, I'm the Eastman I'm saxophone artist, and I want to talk to you today about jamming. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a loose term. I mean, it used to be the association of a, a jam session, and getting to a jam session, you know, you get there and you, and, and you want to play, and then the first thing they say to you, what do you want to play? And you look around everybody else and say, well, I don't know, what do you want to play? And this still goes on about five or ten minutes. Uh, when you go preparing for a jam session, uh, you should take the tunes you're working on. Take the tunes that you're working on, and hopefully, you know, maybe you're using a Jamie Abersaw play along. If you're beginning, use volume 54. Those tunes in there are standard tunes. Um, you know, maybe it's a song from my father. Might be really great to work on. So when you get to the jam session, say, well, what do you want to play? Let's play a song from my father. And generally, people are going to play it in the standard key unless you have a vocalist, and then it may go south from there. But uh, you'll have fun with it. You have the basic structure of the tune. You know how the tune works and, and the function of it. You know the melody. Um, so, but when you're at home and you're uh, um, playing song for my father, being able to play along with the record, uh, which I recommend highly, or playing along with the play along, or sometimes just playing along with yourself, being able to play um, that melody. <laughs> So when, I, when I'm playing right now, I'm trying to think about playing that melody and trying to add my solo to it. You know, I'm not, I'm not so much now thinking about chord structures as much. You know, I'm just trying to say, okay, what feels good? How's the groove? Again, back, back to the groove. But being able to play by yourself and have a sense of the melody and the harmonic structure as it moves in your mind is very important. You keeping that sense of um, energy rather than just relying on somebody around you to play it. Um, so it's very important. We all have to do our own part um, to make sure the music is moving. So thinking about ideas or licks that you might use in that solo. Um, the other thing I recommend too when you're doing a jam session, say, talk to yourself. Say, you know, I'm going to take two choruses and play two choruses. I'm going to play take one chorus and play one chorus. But try to discipline yourself so that you are approaching the music kind of logically. I've seen people at jam sessions who, who go up there and they'll, you know, and, and some people actually can play 15, 16 choruses, but most people are, are turned off after number two or number three, unless you're saying something that they haven't been said before. And I hate to tell you that this thing has a lot of history and a lot of great players have come on it. So our job is to try to keep that, that legacy alive, but we're not gonna do a whole lot that hasn't been done before. Okay, so anyway, but having fun with it is very, very um, essential, you know, playing that melody. Something right now that, you know, when you, so you, you're hearing it, you know, you're trying to, you know, bring it to life. Uh, Horace Silver would, would like that, I think. Thanks a lot.